Hello there, lovely people. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some essential top tips for mastering your British accent. I am Benjamin, an English teacher from London, England, and if you want to work on your British accent and to hopefully aspire to have an RP accent, then this video is just for you. This is probably something that you have been working on for such a long time, but with some tips today, like vowel sounds, intonation, and word choices, you are going to take your British pronunciation to the next level. For those of you that are new here, hello everybody, my name is Benjamin. Please subscribe if you like these style of videos and you would like to see more. And don't forget, we are also on Instagram at English Life with Benjamin. Why don't we start this video by letting me know in the comments section where you are from and why you want to master the British pronunciation. I guess to start off with, we should explain the meaning of RP. It means received pronunciation. Now, I would say that that is the accent that I have, and it's something very typical for London and the south of the country. Of course, if you venture to other areas of the country like Manchester, Liverpool, and further afield like Scotland, you are gonna experience many different accents. But the RP accent is mainly derived from the south of the country, and if you were to listen to a BBC broadcast and you listen to the presenter, that is probably the accent that you would come to hear and expect from them. Let's kick this off with some very important vowel sounds. And the best place to begin is the schwa sound. This sound appears all over the language, so it is really important that you nail this as quickly as possible. It, the sound is uh, and you can hear it in so many words like teacher, doctor, water, even the sound or the word the has the schwa sound. To be able to produce this vowel sound, your mouth needs to be quite relaxed with your tongue just resting inside and it's just a kind of release out. Uh, uh, water, doctor, teacher. Very good. Just to check a couple more words that have the schwa sound inside, words like important, the uh sound is in the A-N-T, or capital, manager, natural. It appears in so many different words in so many different places. The next one we are going to look at is the short O sound. This can be found in words like mop, log, or got. If we compare this to the American English, in British we would say got, but in American they might say something like got. Forgive me for my bad American impersonation. I have never been good at impersonations, but let's compare one more. In British English, stop, stop. But maybe in American English, it would be stop, stop. Okay, enough impersonations for today. Let's get back to what I know best, which is the British English sounds and not the American English sounds. And you can see when I'm trying to pronounce stop, my lips are very rounded, the tongue is relaxed inside the mouth, oh, and it's just pushing out, oh, stop, stop, beautiful. The next vowel sound is one that I love, which is the long A sound, which is like an R, and this is quintessentially British. You can hear this in words like car, bar, far, father, rather. As you can see, when I am pronouncing these words, my mouth is quite widely open. It's almost as if I'm at the dentist making that ah sound. And that is kind of what you want to do, father. So your tongue is going back a little bit, your mouth is quite wide open, and you are making it like that, father, far, car. And that's very interesting to compare the RP pronunciation to pronunciation in other parts of the country. If you listen to someone who maybe is from up north, instead of saying bath, they would say something like bath, I'm from bath. Or instead of let's take the pa, they would say let's take the path. The final vowel sound that we are going to look at before moving on is the round O sound, which can be heard in some very typical words like hello. So it's not too short and it's not too long. It's not hello, hello. And it can be heard in words like go, flow, and it is an O sound. Repeat after me, O. 
The second thing that is so crucially important if you want to work on your British accent is the stress and the intonation when speaking. Because as you can tell, I am doing that so much when I speak. This is not something that is easy to teach. It is something that you must mirror and that you must copy through absorbing whilst listening as much as possible. You can do this by watching series, watching TV shows, watching movies, listening to conversations, and just mimicking, copying, shadowing what is said and how it is said. So many times when I'm teaching students, they are reading texts, but it's literally monotone. There is no up and down movement. Everything is the same and it has such a different impact. So if you want to even work on this mirroring technique, you can watch this video, you can listen to what I say, and then you can repeat it back whilst pausing the video and then do it over again. You are mimicking my accent, you are mimicking the way I speak, and you are mimicking where I put stress and intonation onto my words. Easy peasy. The third thing that we are going to look at is the choice of words. This is a key factor and it can really reveal the true origin of the accent. Now, first of all, we all know that each English-speaking country has different words for different things. Maybe we have flat and apartment. Maybe we have bin and trash can. Maybe we have pavement and sidewalk. It is also how us British people pronounce our words. When there is a T in the word, it might be silent. Instead of saying better, we say better. Instead of saying proper with E-R, we say proper. Another good one to mention is I suppose, which means I think or I imagine. But when we're speaking, we really say I suppose. I suppose it's a good idea or suppose. We don't even use the I sometimes. So really bear in mind and remember to make sure that you are choosing the British version of the word rather than the American version. There is also a lot of slang vocabulary in British English. The word knackered, which means to be extremely tired. Dodgy, which means a bit weird or suspicious. Or the word rubbish which means bin, but it can also mean something really bad. So if you're thinking about your vowel sounds, if you're thinking about your intonation and your tone of voice, and you're also thinking about which choice of words to use, whether they're British or American, you've already made some incredible steps forward to achieving that really nice British pronunciation. Now, I must contradict myself slightly in this next point, because I did say earlier on that when we speak, we might say better or something like that, and we don't say the T sound in the middle, but that is not so much the RP received pronunciation accent, because when there is a T in the word, like teacher or two or tour, when we stress that T sound, that really gives the British accent something special. Make sure when pronouncing the T sound, there is no t spitting involved. It's not an extremely strong T, but it's just a bit of a soft T, but it is enunciated and it does have a nice difference. Teacher taught, to, taught. Okay, good. Now, if we think about the word water in received pronunciation, water. In American English, it might be water, water. It's kind of like a D sound, but it is well known, the other pronunciation of water, which is water. And this is what I spoke about earlier, where the T sound is not pronounced in the middle of the word, but that's a little bit more informal. It's not so much received proper pronunciation, but you can use both. It just depends how you want to come across. So let's compare the three. Water, water, which is American, and water, a bottle of water. You can see the reason that's so famous is because the bottle has two T's and water has one. A bottle of water, a bottle of water. Very good. Just to give you a little bit of a technical reasoning as to why, it is called a glottal stop. And that is when the T is kind of removed from the middle of the word. And you're about to say it, what? but then there is a bit of tension in your throat, what? So you say what? And then instead of saying the T, you go, ah, uh, what? Uh. But this is not part of 
RP English and RP pronunciation. So if what you're really aiming for is the RP pronunciation, then glottal stops is not something that you should be focusing on. So to wrap up, there are some key points from this video that you can practice to incredibly improve your British pronunciation. I hope you liked this video. If you did and if you thought this was helpful, please let me know in the comments because I have plenty more tips, tricks and ideas and in-depth videos that I can share with you to help you with your British pronunciation. If you had any doubts, let me know in the comments and I can also do a more in-depth video on each of these points. Let me know. I hope you enjoyed it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't stop practicing. Don't stop the mirroring technique. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye for now.